Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about stress relaxation experiments and creep experiments. Specifically, when you calibrate the material model, you often need data at different strain rates or stress relaxation or creep information. So you want to run these experiments, but the question really is, how long should you run them? Is it enough to run it 10 minutes? Do you run it, need to run it many hours? Well, how do you decide that? Today I'm going to try to address that and answer that question using a case study. So the idea here is I will use some experimental data that I have for a HDPE material, and I'm going to explore the use of different times. So here's the data. Here's uniaxial tension at three different strain rates, loading and unloading. So this is good data by itself. I can calibrate a viscoplastic material model to it. It has a lot of information that's valuable. But I also did more. I tested the same material in uniaxial tension to a, either 3% or 7% strain, and then I held that strain constant for a pretty long time, about 17 hours. So here's the data. On the figure to the left is stress versus time. On the figure to the right is stress versus logarithmic time. So this is the data that I want to use. So here the idea is to explore different things. So what happens, for example, if I calibrate a material model to the cyclic tension data only? Will I be able to predict the, the relaxation data up to 17 hours? In other words, how important is the stress relaxation ex experiment it's, uh, by itself? Another test that I can explore is, what if I calibrate the material model to the cyclic tension data plus just the first minute of the stress relaxation data? So I truncate and ignore the last part of the test, and then I calibrate to that, and then see, can I then predict the response that I know what it is up to 17 hours. What if I don't use one minute? What if I use 10 minutes or one hour? Um, so today I'm going to show you how this works. So the idea here is how important is stress relaxation and creep? And secondly, how long do you need to run these tests if the goal is to calibrate a material model, which is what I'm focusing on here. Um, so. The first thing here, the first step, is to calibrate just a material model to the cyclic tension data. And I thought about this. What material model should I use? Well, I'm using in to, here the PolyUmod TNV model. This is the material model that I showed, showed in many of my previous videos to be really accurate for different classes of thermoplastics. It's the most accurate model in most cases. So I'm starting with that model because it's a really accurate model. So, so here's the results. So the figure to the left is both the experimental cyclic tension data and the predictions from this TNV model, which is a viscoplastic material model from the PolyUmod library. And the, the dashed curves are the predictions and the solid curves are the experimental. And the error between them, the model is accurate up to 1.6%. Uh, it's fantastic. It matches that data really well. So that's what I used to calibrate the model. The figure to the right shows you how uh, this model would behave if you then ask it, after it's been calibrated, to predict the stress relaxation response under these conditions that I have data for. And we'll see that in this case, the error is almost 9%. One of the tests were predicted really well, like the 3% test, but the 7% test was not so accurate. It was a little bit more off. So this is encouraging to see that we can actually calibrate the stress relaxation response pretty well, even though we didn't test it. But can we do better? What if we actually add a little bit of the stress relaxation data to it? Um, and first, I'm going to add just the first minute. So of these 17 hours of stress relaxation that I have, I'm just going to look at the first minute. I put that into M calibration together with the cyclic tension data. So I have all of that in M calibration. Cyclic tension, one minute relaxation. I calibrate the TMV model to that from the same starting point as I just did in my first study. And these figures show the results. So the figure to the left shows that in this case, the cyclic predictions are a little bit less accurate. The error is about 2.7%. Uh, Still good, but it's slightly less accurate because it also has to try to match the relax first minute of relaxation data. And the figure to the right shows how this calibrated material model then predicts the response up to 17 hours. So when I calibrate it to the first minute, this is the prediction I get uh, of relaxation up to 17 hours. It looks really good, right? 4% error, and it matches the trend in both cases very well. So having a short-term relaxation test like that 
allows the model to be better calibrated to the whole complete data set, it seems like. What, what if I change one minute to 10 minutes? What if I use the first 10 minutes of the relaxation data? Then we get the results shown here. It looks a little bit odd, perhaps, with, uh, in the cyclic data, and it selected that in order to better match these curves. So overall, it's it's a it's a similar fit overall, but it's a, it's kind of um, not necessarily much better in some sense. It does match these a little bit better, but these are perhaps a little bit worse. But what if we switch from 10 minutes to use the first hour of the relaxation data? In this case, well, let's take a look. We'll see that the cyclic tension data has an error of 3.4, uh, almost 3.5%. Not too bad, it's a little bit worse than before, but we have a really good prediction of the stress relaxation response this time, using just one hour of the relaxation data. And then if I use all the data at once, all cyclic data and all the 17 hours of stress relaxation data, this is the best fit I can come up with using M calibration, just running it using the automatic solver uh, and uh, for a long time. This was maybe an hour of calibration or something like that. And the overall fit is really good. The cyclic tension, 3%, the relaxation is 2% error. It looks really good. But if we compare these now and, and sort of what kind of conclusions do we see? So here, here are some conclusions. Uh, so here are the different scenarios, no relaxation and different type of amounts of relaxation that I add to my calibration. And this is the predictions of when I try to predict all the data that I have. So we'll see that if I don't have the relaxation data, that is the worst case uh, it, it, in, in terms of the model predictions. It's not bad, but adding a little bit of relaxation helps in this case. Perhaps there is a little bit of inconsistency between the relaxation data and the cyclic data, particularly when it comes to preload time, which is an important factor. But what we do see is that we don't need 17 hours of stress relaxation in this case. That is not helping us that much. It reduces the error, yes. But we, even the one minute, we have almost the same accuracy of the relaxation data. So what I think um, the conclusion here is, if your goal is to calibrate the material model, you have a good viscoplastic material model in mind, and you calibrate to it, you don't actually need to run your uh, stress relaxation or creep experiments for uh, uh, 10 hours, 20 hours, 50 hours. In most cases, for the material model calibration, a much shorter uh, test itself is likely going to be good enough because most of the action happens early on and M calibration, when it fits the material model to that data, will get that very accurately. And the trends of the material model for larger times extrapolate usually very well. Um, I also uh, want to mention repeated this study using a different material model, using the TN model, three network models, which is a little bit less accurate but the same conclusions held, and I, I report that in, in my blog article. So this is how I would do it. I would run these experiments uh, to relatively short time in some way. There are circumstances, of course, when you want to run your stress relaxation or creep to much longer times if you are particularly interested in certain failure events and things like that. But most of the time, that's not necessary. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.